All right, so good evening and uh, welcome to everyone here attending online. Today we have uh, a new session of the DQ Labs eMeet. Now, uh, we've invited the students studying at BMS College of Architecture and MS Ramaya uh, School of Architecture. All right, so uh, it's been so so there are some schools where the management would come and there are some schools where the students would come right so in this case of these two schools uh, we have our students of tq labs plus students who've done really well in in their exams at nata and you know have got through to these prestigious schools and uh, we've invited these students here specifically because there were requests from uh, a lot of you to interact with students from these two campuses. So the students that we have here are Aditi Banu Prakash and Charita Reddy. Uh, both of them currently studying at BMS College of Architecture, uh, Bangalore. And then we also have Dina as well as Alina, who are both studying at MS Ramaya uh, Institute of Technology School of Architecture. All right. Um, so let me get into the session right away. And we will, and, and y'all can ask questions as well. So as soon as y'all ask questions, we could, um, you know, we could moderate this and, and have uh, things done. So thanks, uh, uh, thanks Aditi and um, Aditi and Charita and Dina and Elena to take time off from your schedules to come here. So thanks a lot for coming in. Um, if y'all can switch your uh, cams on, that would be great. Right. All right, all right, thanks. So um, brilliant having all of y'all here. Uh, if y'all could just briefly, you know, um, talk about which school you're you are studying at and uh, uh, probably what what rank you all got when you all uh, if you all remember your ranks please do mention your rank when you got in and uh, and yeah uh, so then we can take the discussion from there all right yeah you all can uh, so let's start with the um, uh, charita yeah you can start off Hi, my name is Charita. I got, I think, 12th, 12th rank in CET and um, I go to VMSA. All right, all right. And you're in which semester now? We're just starting our third semester. Starting third semester. So all of you all are in third semester, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, Dina, would you go next? Yeah, hi, I'm Dina. I'm from uh, MS Ramay Institute of Technology. And I got, I think, around 180 in CET. All right. Cool. And Elena? Uh, I'm Elena. I study in MS Ramay Institute of Technology. And uh, I got uh, 117, I think. All right. All right. Thanks. And, uh, and Aditi? Uh, hi all. Uh, so I'm studying at BMS College of Architecture. I secured a uh, ninth rank in uh, Karnataka. All right, all right, fantastic. So, um, so let's get into your experiences. So all of y'all are entering the third semester now, and uh, what the students here would like to really understand is what your experiences are. Uh, as students studying in the third semester or getting into the third semester, how was your first year experience like, right? Um, so if you all can possibly um, maybe just talk a little bit about your first year, how was it uh, moving from, uh, you know, uh, uh, your regular class 12 to your um, architecture, how different was the experience and what was it like to be doing it online, right? So probably um, maybe Charita could start off with this. Yeah, so um, I think architecture in general, like I heard from my seniors that it's a very, very stressful 
um, course, but I wasn't really ready for what came at me in first semester. So it is very, very stressful. But I think um, at, at the end of the semester, when you see like the body of work you produced and like, you know that it's your own work, I think you get like a very, like, it's like a sense of pride for yourself. And it's so different from how you learn in 12th, where it's just looking at your textbooks and learning while in architecture, you kind of, it's all hands-on work, right? And um, you get critique from your teachers, from your friends, and you try to like constantly improve what you're doing. So yeah, definitely it was, um, it was a very nice change, but also very stressful. Um, and then I think going into second semester, I got more used to um, like the workload. So I think time management got a little bit better, not, not that great. But yeah, it definitely takes some time to get used to it. And um, I would say that the juniors are kind of lucky that offline classes are going to start for them from first year itself, because first year is kind of a little bit more um, like laid back compared to second and third year, I think, because you're still getting introduced to the subject. So yeah, that, it's really good that it's offline because offline classes are a lot, lot better than online learning. All right, all right. Um, Aditi, what about your experience? I'm not sure if Aditi is there or her. Yeah, Aditi, you're there. Right. So, so could you give us an idea of what your experience was uh, moving from a class 12 to, to, the, uh, to architecture? How was your first year? Yeah, so classes were completely online. We didn't have any idea what was drafting. And it was like uh, everything, all the subjects were completely new for us. Uh, but again, uh, uh, at first, we couldn't manage time also properly. Uh, but later on, God adjusted, but first semester was still, uh, again, at the end, looking at our portfolios, we got a little motivated for the second semester. Uh, yeah, second semester was pretty much good compared to the first semester. Uh, but again, if it was offline, it would have been better. Online was a little difficult. All right. So when did you all actually start classes? Your first semester and when did you start your second semester? Because last uh, year first semester started late. was December. Okay. Okay. And yeah, we started in December. Uh, second semester, we started in uh, May, but our first semester exams still weren't completed yet. Uh, our practical exams were pending. During the second sem, we had to take a break for our first sem exams and then again get back to the second sem exams. And so right. we didn't have exams for the second semester, basically. All right, not yet had your exams, so it's going to happen soon. Or no exams at all. Uh, no, we, we don't have our finals for our second sem. We just skip that. <laughs> okay, okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Right, so, um, Alina, if you can tell us now, what what is now, um, you all said that the experience, you have been on campus now for about a month, right? Um, so what's the experience of being on campus? How is it very different from being online? How's your experience been? Um, I would say it's definitely better than online, as uh, Charita and Aditi said, because like uh, it's the you get to meet people and you get to see how your work is. Com you can compare your work with them, and you can. There are group activities which are you know very helpful. So there are a lot of benefits. I really prefer the offline. Uh, classes, yeah. All right. Do you get to interact with your seniors and juniors as well, uh, or or is it that you all pretty much stick to your own batch at the stage? Uh, I think because of the whole COVID thing, the we haven't been able to interact with our seniors because we have online classes and they may have offline. So it's it's a yeah. So right. we aren't able to meet them. All right. All right. All right. Cool. So Dina. Um, what about you? I mean, in terms of your experience with the online versus the offline, and I'm asking you all because you all have spent a month on campus, whereas um, BMS has not yet spent that time on campus. So, sir, I would prefer offline. I understood 
things better but then again in online i save a lot of time you have subjects like kannada and constitution english and all of that i would sit and draft during that time so i didn't have a lot of pending work okay and uh, it was easier that way just for time management online was better so my first sem i didn't have a lot of pending work i would be able to finish it during the same day because i had they would manage the subject with a few drafting subjects and a few easier subjects so that way it was i mean online was nice and for theory based subjects online was nice but for design uh and uh, say building construction offline was better they would show us samples and all online but there's only so much you can understand with something which is being shown through a camera so that way offline is something all, i mean i'm happy with offline this time all right so so when you do the offline uh classes so when you get to touch and feel material say in the material labs or your studios mm-hmm. that that makes a big difference isn't it yes yes definitely even your model making classes are like very helpful that way okay Okay. Okay. All right. And uh, what about the time? You, you now you mentioned that you were able to balance time better when it was an online situation. Um, and here, you, so do you stay on campus or do you stay off campus? I stay I mean, off campus. You stay off campus and you travel. Yes. All right. Um, all right. So traveling takes a lot of time. Does that eat into your work, which you actually have to do a lot of output? Mm-hmm. a little bit yeah it takes me around 20 to 30 minutes to and from ramaya okay. so it takes me i mean it it's a bit, a, a bit of my time but then again say we, we probably draft in college as well in second sem i somehow was able to manage and balance that we had like one week of holidays i think uh, ramaya does not have viva for in your first year so uh, we had finished all of our exams by then and once uh, vtu asked for uh, the continuation of your first sem exams we had holidays so that holidays gave me time to finish my previous papers whatever was pending we had like a week break when other colleges had exams we didn't have anything so it was just holidays i used that a bit so in a way i was able to balance all right interesting um some questions coming in how do you find the faculty and their interactions with you all right um now we'll take this separately first we'll do probably bms and then we'll come to um uh, to ms ramaya so aditi could you uh, give us a little insight into your interactions with your faculty uh since majority of the classes were online uh faculty were really very helpful for us actually they started from scratch like how to fix a sheet on your table and everything uh and again like they were always like very ready to help us and responding well to all our doubts and queries uh again we had little anxiety during like, for not able to complete works uh they were a little liberal but they all of most of them were like quite firm with the submissions and all they wanted it on time so they were like it's okay you had to do it and uh, uh one more thing was like we had these proctors and all uh, who really helped us like uh if we had any difficulty for like not able to complete our work or if something was getting difficult we could go like uh, they would help us actually but faculty all together it was like actually good all right all right uh so so it's interesting that you mentioned that there are proctors who help you out what is the role of this proctor what do they who are they and what what role do they play maybe uh, charita could take that question Uh, yeah so a proctor is um like they're a part of the faculty itself but they basically kind of check in on you to like ask like how are you doing and stuff to make sure like everything is going smoothly and like if you want to talk to them about anything or like have any questions about uh, like anything on campus then you can go to the proctors okay uh but is it really stressful i mean so everyone hears that architecture is stressful lot of drawings lot of submission lot of time do you really have to stay up late at night and sit and finish all these work and lot of submissions the next day is that really it or is it kind of manageable i mean i think uh, like it definitely you definitely take time to get used to it but um, other than like that last week where you have all subject submissions 
other than that one week everything else is like pretty manageable like you can get through it without um pulling too many all nighters but that one week where you have to submit your ad portfolio your uh, mmbc portfolio and every other subject submission is very stressful but i mean with good time management you can get there just me personally i haven't got it all right all right so um like aditi mentioned that some faculty are very strict with deadlines right so are they i mean so what happens if you uh, now since the question is related to your interaction with the faculty what happens if you miss your deadlines uh, what do faculty do if you, in case you miss your deadlines yeah, so i think Uh, the VMS faculty have actually been like very helpful. You, even if we have doubts, like after class hours and stuff, uh, they usually like respond to us and uh, you know guide us through whatever we wanted. Um, but but like as long as you get your work done, they're very good to you. But then um, when it comes to submissions, like they have to be firm because if you keep postponing it, then the end like the students are going to suffer because it's just going to be a lot of work in the end at once. so like one thing that we've learned as a class is to form a group and then be like ma'am please no we we can't submit give us like <laughs> attention and like we just keep annoying them until they push it a little bit so i would uh, i would tell the juniors to learn that and like get that class unity so you can pester your teachers a little bit to okay. get experience all right all right but in in extreme cases only i'm guessing yeah, yeah. <laughs> because i, I I, I think from what I got from your answers that these things will keep coming, and if you yourself delay, it's just going to get more and more and more. So you'd like to av- avoid that as much as possible, unless it's absolutely necessary. Thank right. Trying to stick to the deadlines is best, actually. Sorry. Trying to stick to the teacher's deadlines is actually best because oh. in the end you'll you'll do better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's that's a good piece of advice. all right uh dina and elena if you all can uh, possibly talk about your experiences with your faculty at ms ramaya uh, so so just so you know the the students here want to get an idea as to what really you do with your faculty right so it's one thing for them to teach but in an architecture con- context it goes beyond teaching right there's a lot more interaction so in your experience at ms ramaya how has your experience been with the faculty do you find them supportive uh, let's probably start with dina uh yeah so i do find them supportive there uh, i think the in the beginning of second sem many had gone back to their places so say uh, somewhere in the north very rural areas and say maybe mangalore as well uh, thanbad and all they didn't have a lot of their drafting material so they gave them like i think more than 2 months time for us to like you know submit our sheets else the rest of us had to submit it through google classroom so that way they were supportive and if you didn't understand anything they were always available on whatsapp and i think a lot of ramaya faculties are uh, alumni as well so that way in a way they're you know they're seniors itself so it's easier to speak to them rather than a completely new teacher they have the experience as well and what i like found from school they were they weren't as strict you had a more casual relationship with your teachers rather than as formal as it was in school so that was nice but in general the teaching and you know, all is fine it's really good interesting interesting uh, for you to point that out that your relationship is much more yes. informal than what it was in school so um, yeah elena would you have anything to add to what uh, dina mentioned um well uh, i think it was it was a difficult task for them to teach architecture online but i think they did really well to accommodate everybody and um, uh we we have like these one to one sessions where they come around to each of our uh, to see each of our works and they give you advice and it's really helpful that way okay do you all have the proctorial system at uh, your school as well yes we do we do have it okay okay and uh, so so it's very easy for you to reach out to someone in case you are facing uh, yes some kind of issues right Yeah, if you have any doubts, anything, you can just go to them. They are always available on WhatsApp. So. All right. So, uh, when you say reach out to them, you reach out to them for what? Any like personal issues or pressure or or um, maybe academic issues? What What is it that you all reach out to them for? 
Um, it could be anything really, but uh, for example, I use I uh, reached out to my proctor for like if I had any questions about when the campus was like reopening and how it was gonna any online education questions and if they want to give feedback about uh, the anything that's happened in the college, you can go to them. All right, all right, um, cool. Thanks, thanks for that. Now uh, there's another question from Tiny Hydra who's asking, what do you think about the competition amongst the students in the college? Um, how does your, uh, yeah, so so is there a lot of competition amongst the students to compete or is there a more collaborative approach in, in your school? So maybe um, Elena, you could continue. How's the relationship with your batch mates? Uh, I think there's a lot of healthy competition, but uh, there's a lot of group activities as well where you need to work together and uh, you know create something. So yeah, that's all right, all right. Uh, and uh, maybe Aditi, would you have anything to talk about the competition in BM in BMS? Yeah, again, so it's a healthy competition itself. We'd be discussing amongst each other about our designs, especially. Our uh, teachers always tell that uh, if you discuss with your friends, you'd get better ideas than discussing with the faculty. So we would discuss about that, about our design. And most of us have pointed mistakes in each other. So in that way, like uh, we have a very good like, group of uh, friends and students um, uh, around us but uh, again uh, uh, we also get these group projects and everything uh, we didn't get much of offline only probably some two three group projects we have done it offline but still uh, we have a very good uh, friends and uh, it's really good like, um, and most of them have come from like different uh, cities and all we get to know like uh, some of them used to tell about uh, what was their type of uh, construction and all which used to happen. So a lot of knowledge exchange and everything used to happen. Right. Uh, I think if I can draw a parallel here, you know, if you look at uh, probably some of these questions stem from the idea that, okay, I don't want to share my ideas because other students may, may, may use my ideas, right? But um, but I personally, I don't see that, you know, you can really take someone else's idea. You can get inspired by that and help you create something better, but you can never take somebody else's idea because there is no way you can replicate that, right? Uh, what do you think of, of that? I mean, should, should you all, is it good to share your ideas and learn from each other or is it good to kind of try as much as possible to see other people's ideas and then work on yourself? Uh, without sharing information. Charita, if you could possibly talk about that. Um, yeah, so as Alti said, we have a lot of uh, like peer review kind of discussions. And I definitely think that helps a lot because um, the more critique you get on your design, the better it can get, right? And I don't think anybody is looking to copy anything. I think everyone is just trying to understand and like gain more knowledge so they can like use it in a way in their design. Because everyone is uh, like trying to create something of their own, right? And everyone has their own mind and idea. So I don't think the copying thing is there too much. Um, and yeah, like peer review definitely, definitely helps. Like uh, even if you have um, any mistakes in yours, your friends can help you figure out solutions to it. And that way they also learn something and you also learn. All right, all right. And uh, I, th I think, you know, one of the examples we were speaking about earlier is is probably the DQ Edge platform where, you know, everyone uploads their work. And after you upload your work, you see other people's work and then you get inspired, right? And you'll see that no two work uh, is the same at, at any level. So, um, so I think it helps. I mean, the purpose we put that is because it helps tremendously. Uh, Another question, do you have, have exchange programs or study trips or study tours? Do you all have it at your schools? Probably uh, if Dina can start off with Ramaya. Uh, yes, so we have one in our third sem. It was usually, it's based off your, whatever you've done in your HOA, that is history of architecture, whatever you're studying in that sem. 
you usually they take you to visit a place from there but then because of covid they've cancelled our study tour we got to know about it today um that's like me you'll probably have it um, assuming but that by your third sem you won't the pandemic won't be as you know serious as it is now uh but yeah they did mention that if you want to you know make our our own groups and go for a study tour without any chaperones the college is open for that we do we still have the subject as you know a study tour as, which is a one credit course and you're still expected to come up with uh, i think a blog for for it say what whichever place you visit but then as of now the, the college isn't you know having one but you're supposed to have one national and then one international study tour in your later sems all right all right um have you all i mean has any of your probably seniors uh, have Uh, have they gone on these study tours and uh, you'll got any information about the experiences that they've faced uh, yes sir. so i think our seniors when they were in their third sem the last batch they went to pondicherry uh, they went for around a week i think they did say it was uh, very nice and they got to visit a lot of churches your french architecture in uh, pondicherry a few beaches over there i mean you can enjoy as well but it's mainly to go around look at stuff maybe sketch out a few things So, all right yeah. all right pondicherry is very beautiful um, it's amazing yeah so um right probably uh, aditi if you can um add to that you know um how about your the architecture tours or study tours that you all have done um in bms have you all worked, done anything or not yet uh no we haven't gone on any study tours yet Uh, but again we have one national and one international law study tour uh, one should be by fourth sem and one should be by sixth sem but you no know, our seniors had gone in first sem but because of covid again we couldn't go anywhere all right all right but do you get to see the work of your seniors and uh, something that you could learn from i'm sure that would be there right yeah like uh, during our very initial days so uh, uh teachers used to show the videos and like what they ha- had all done the sketches basically where they had visited a uh, few of them had gone to delhi agra jaipur and a few of them had gone to bhutan so just a documentary they had shown to us okay. but unfortunately we couldn't <laughs> not the same as going there right yeah 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 All right. Um, a question from Charanya Kumar. All right. Um, the question is: Is it difficult to transition from your PU classes to your college classes uh, with regard to completing of portions and um, difficulty in art and you know creativity? How is that transition? Charita, if you can take that. Um. So, uh, what was the question again? How was the transition between transition? Yeah. So, going from a mindset of a college mindset to a uh, to a you know from a class eleven twelve mindset to a professional mindset. So, how does that transition work? Was it easy or was it challenging? I mean, I think it depends on like each person's interest in the subject. Like for me, I always I knew I wanted to do architecture and like. I I've, I've always been like creatively inclined sort of so for me it wasn't like very difficult because this is what this is what I enjoy doing um but I definitely think you need to have like interest in the subject to be able to like fully be invested in it but so uh, like that if you think about it, the transition is easy um it just takes some time to get used to the workload but that's it all right all and, right and um I just want to add on to the previous question like uh we had like this exhibition of our seniors work at some point so we could see their work and we also had this uh, bms organized this vertical studio design competition where um, like uh, second sem fourth sem sixth sem i think 10th sem no 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 or oh, even them yeah so okay. all of us put in uh, groups uh, so that you could learn from each other and participate in a design competition so that way you can see uh, like where you're expected to be in another year so you, you know where you stand 
Right. So, uh, do you get opportunities to participate in design competitions? As in, do they inform you that this is happening, that is happening, participate? Does the school yeah. tell you that? Yeah, definitely. Like, our student council uh, keeps telling us about design competitions that are happening and stuff. And even in college, there are, uh, like, a bunch of competitions happening. For us, since it was online, we uh, didn't, we weren't exactly fully informed of all the um, like extracurricular activities happening, but since we are going to go offline soon, um, hopefully we can do more of that. All right, just one second. All right, um, right. So, I, so Priyanka Pandit is asking, at BMS, do we have a social life? Uh, when we interacted with students of RV, they said it's hard to actually have time for yourself. Now, there's a similar question um, again from uh, I think a couple of other students as well. But yeah, what's the what's the social life like? Right? Is it uh, is it fun? Is it is it easy to uh, interact with other people, or you don't have time for yourselves? Um, I would say for us at least e e online and even that one, one and a half month that we went offline, we did have like a pretty good social life. Like you can interact with your friends and I think architecture in itself is like you have to interact with other people, right? So on top of that also, like you just have to make time for yourself. It's not like you'll never uh, be free. So, I mean, I've had a lot of fun in the past year. So it just depends on like every person and how you manage your time, but that's it. All right. Elena, what about you? I mean, um, in that sense, at uh, MS, Ram MS Ramaya, how does it go, the social aspect? Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's nice. I like it because like we were able, it was a different way to meet people. Like in the beginning when it was online classes, you had to uh, uh, talk to people through WhatsApp. But even though it was just online, it was uh, very like, we were able to have a lot of fun together, and uh, even now, when you, in when we have offline uh, classes, it's yeah, it's good. All right, all I don't right. think you. I, it's it's not like we don't have time at all. If you learn time, how to manage your assignments, and then it's it's pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, building up on what Charita said, I mean, it's it's better to stick to timelines and finish that because then you have more time. For yourself at a later stage, right? Um, so interesting. Um, now, there's a question to all of you. This is a question from Sanjana Mahave. Uh, can you share one project you worked on? Um, each of y'all, if y'all could, if y'all have something accessible uh, and y'all like to share it, that would be great. Uh, but y'all could take your time and, and get that. We'll come back to this question a little later, but just let me know if you have something to share all right uh sanika sanika is asking uh, when will they release the official cutoff okay let me share my screen here um and at this point of time because there have been a lot of students asking about the cutoffs in the previous uh, webinars so i am going to show this right now if you look at this document uh you need to see the architecture cutoff ranks 2020. Now there are multiple rounds. So there's a first round, second round, and the uh, extended round. Now, what you need to do see is all the colleges are listed here. For example, um, this is the college listing with the college code. And each of these are the categories of reservations that are there. So if you do fall under any reservation category, you need to look at that. And if you don't fall under a reservation category, you come under general merit. Now, for example, if we look at MS Ramaya, under general merit, the round one cutoffs were over at 134, rank 134, right? Uh, so this is what you need to look at to see in round one. Now, round two, there may be students from round one who drop off and they may go into round two. So um, some of the information is not there, but of the documents that are there, you will see how many seats are left under, this is at the end of round two, 
uh, the three seats left or Ramaya had two seats left at the end of round two, right? So you need to, your best chance of getting through, you know, a BMS or a Ramaya or any school for that matter is in your round one. Uh, that That is more sh a guaranteed method to get in. Now, based on your rank, you need to see under your rank category and you will know which kind of colleges you will possibly get. All right. Look through the rank one cutoffs because this will give you an idea. Um, and that would be something that uh, you'll need to use as a guideline. All right. Very important at this stage. Um, it's very important for you to understand how to put your preference of colleges because you need to know your preference of colleges and you need to put them in order. Uh, of course, I think uh, all four of y'all would not have had much trouble. Y'all would have pr pretty much got the colleges that y'all wanted. But uh, as you go lower down in your ranks, then it's important that that is well thought of because the first one you get, you will the first college you put in order, you will get that college. So you should not regret that decision. Uh, for the students here, what we'll do is we will, I, I'm sharing these, these uh, two documents with my counselors. So anyone wants, they can reach out to the counselors and get, that, uh, get the documents from them. All right, I'll be sharing it after this webinar. Um, so that was for you, Sanika, uh, since you had asked that question. Uh, Sanjana Mahave is asking another question. Do you all maintain notes, like notes on a on a paperback, or do you use tablets or iPads? Anyone could take this question. Dina, you could take this question. Sorry. So uh, we're allowed to use our phones or tablets to take notes if you want to. We don't have prescribed textbooks, or they don't expect us to take notes. If you want to, you could. It's, see, since it's a very practical course, I don't think notes is required as much. You, if, As long as you're here and you're understanding what they're telling you, it's more than enough. And you have your sheets anyway, so you can like, go through your sheets for notes. All right, all right. Um, Charita, you would like to add anything? Uh, yeah, I would say um, for even for theory subjects, I think one person in the class keeps notes and everybody else just uses those. Like they don't expect you to take notes at all. Okay, okay. They don't expect you to take notes. Uh, all right. So then what you'd be doing is taking down notes just for your own reference, right? Not really for anything else. So it boils down to being very involved with what you're doing. And uh, really, the purpose of taking notes is just for your own knowledge. And the real output comes in your work that comes out of it, isn't it? Uh, so that's where your submissions become critical. All right. The next question from Sanjana is, do the colleges teach you to use software like CAD or is everything done on paper and you know with pen and paper or your drawing equipment? Um, Elena, if you could take that question. Um, so we have a subject called uh, computers and architecture, which is just for software. So uh, I think last time we did Google SketchUp and this, uh, this time I think we are, we'll be doing AutoCAD. So we have like a subject dedicated for software. And then I think from fourth sem onwards, I'm not sure, uh, we get to do some of our sheets completely like using software. All right. Uh, now, do you have to purchase the software or does it come along with your, um, you know, the college gives it to you? Uh, in the computer labs in the college, the software is already installed. So we don't have to purchase anything. All right. But when you all were working from home, what? From what home, we use the trial versions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Did you all do it differently at uh, um, BMS uh, Aditi? Uh, yeah, so in our third sem, uh, we have this uh, CAD as a subject itself. And uh, probably from our fourth, actually from fifth sem, they'll allow us to use the software in our design. But uh, since there was COVID and all, uh, our seniors got to use it from the fourth sem itself. 
and again uh, we get this uh, student id so many of the softwares we actually get it for free uh, like cad revit and all again in a college lab uh, all the softwares are free but again with student id we get many of the paid softwares for free all right all right um right and do you all get the option now in case you all don't want to uh, buy or you'll want to try it out do you all get so you'll get trial versions one thing but do you all get other open source software that you all could use or it has to be these software the paid ones full versions aditi if you can take that we haven't actually like started much with softwares okay. uh, but i don't know i guess they expect us some software i don't know if but college people teach us some softwares like cad again in higher semesters they take revit and few softwares but they will allow us to work with other softwares also i have seen my seniors working with other softwares apart from what college has told us to do all right so the i think it boils down to at least from what i understand what is important is the output and what you do with the software the software is a medium so they will teach you one software but it's up to you you know to explore other software and use is that is that a, the right understanding that i've got yes sir or... but uh, we would be having some progressive marks so they would expect us to show some work even in the software which they teach us uh, since all of them would be internal subjects uh, we would be have to be showing our works in those softwares also all right all right um anyone else wants to add anything to this um, yeah so uh, since the college doesn't teach us like all kinds of softwares actually in bms our seniors have started this step program where they uh, like volunteer to teach the juniors um softwares if they're interested to learn so i just thought oh wow that's 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 a very good uh, thing you know it's it's the opportunity to interact with the seniors and they get to help you and you get to learn from them and uh, i think that's that's part of the social uh, social life i guess you know what a uh, few people were asking um akshay is asking how's the campus life at ms ramay akshay i hope your question has been answered uh, priyanka pandit is asking about how often how frequently are juries held anyone can take this question open question yeah so we'll be having uh, two juries which are uh, like for our internal marking uh, and at the end of the semester we'll be having one which will be conducted by the vt itself so 2 plus 1 okay okay and there are external juries or internal juries how does it work Uh, when i say external do, do the faculty who who are evaluating you do they come from external uh, colleges or are they internal itself yeah usually they call um, like already practicing architects or professors so it's uh, usually external okay okay all right all right um charanya is asking have any of you had any prior experience or practice related to your portion before joining college like have you attended a specific architecture drawing or design class uh, so did you all maybe you all interned so did you all intern or do anything before joining architecture has anyone done that no uh, i know? have joined this place called design one after my 11th grade it was more into say um, it wasn't uh, specifically architecture but more of design and they had this summer camp like thing for i think it's near bagalore i it's a little it's at a distance from my place but i still went there it was fun um i got to work with their office as well as their summer camp the office was uh, i think they do uh, what do you call logo design as well they do a lot of that so i didn't necessarily have to do anything but i got to shadow people who were actually working on it plus with the summer camp i got to help out with you know making uh, children say in, in the uh, primary school age that is grade 1 to 4 i got to help them understand how design works i was also learning in the same process so yeah in a way that was helpful 
Right. I guess mentoring someone else always helps um, at any level, right? It helps you structure mm-hmm. your thoughts and communicate better. So that's that's good. Uh, but do you recommend that students do this? Because they have some time right now. Um, so do you recommend that they volunteer? Do you recommend that they uh, do something related to architecture design or learn some software? Yeah, yeah, I, I think it would be helpful. See, something like SketchUp, for me, SketchUp, I think for most of us, if you've done computers up until even eighth grade, it's going to be easy. So learning, say, a software as simple as SketchUp, or actually, since I think most of your internships now, when you go on intern, Shala, they're all online. So, and you have time, you don't have to travel, so why not? It, it'll help you. In, in the end, you can't learn design, it's a process, you just understand it. So doing any kind of internship or maybe even just looking at other people's work, it is going to help you in the long run. All right. All right. Um, right. So, but, but, okay. So what I get is that um, if you do something, it helps, but if you don't do it, it's not, it's, it's fine as well, because they will still teach you the software. They will still teach you the processes in your school. Uh, so that's fine, but it's, it's just better if you do something, you have the time, better to do something, right? So that's what I get. Is everyone's doing the same thing, unless you show that you're more interested in it, or mm-hmm. you put in your extra effort, you're not going to shine. Everyone knows everything what the college is teaching. So true, true. that way it helps. Nice, interesting perspective. So to the audience here, uh, I think from Dina's experience, it's important that you do something beyond um the regular just even now that you have free time please try and get something that you can do uh, even if it's an online internship um right so ravi gauda is asking a nice question which says how how is your college different from the others what's special in your college i like this question uh so i'm sure each of you all would have different things so uh starting with uh, dina can you tell us what's special about MS Ramaya? So with MS Ramaya, see first I felt it's autonomous. I don't see a lot of architecture colleges in Karnataka which are autonomous. So in a way that was nice. We didn't have jury in the first sem. We just had, I think we had to submit our sheets and uh, there was a lot of internal grading. In a way that helped. We didn't have that much pressure from the first sem itself. But, and then uh, also, I, I think our subjects are a little different. I think Charita mentioned MMC or something. I don't think we call it the same. I don't know if our uh, portions are same as well. And I've compared our, say, history portions. And I think another VTU colleges, we have we study a bit. Uh, it, it's a little bit different here and there. They teach us the same thing, essentially. But the way they teach, that will be a little bit different. And yeah, it's mainly different. All right. So, so what you're saying is that MS Ramaya has their own university and uh, it's not, so your degree comes from the university or does it come no, from VTU? So, uh, no, we are affiliated to VTU, but we're autonomous. So essentially the syllabus and all is set by us. The teaching is done by Ramaya. The correction is done by Ramaya. I think jury they call externally, but in the end you get your degree from VTU. I think a VTU degree would hold, uh, you know, I think it's more prestigious than just a, a, a MS Ramaya degree. VTU is more well known. Even say if you take it internationally, VTU is more well known. So that way your degree is it's, it's heavier. Right, right, right. Um, Elena, sticking with uh, MS Ramaya, what do you think are the makes your college different from the other colleges? Um. So. Uh, what I I have a lot of uh, our professors and uh, they they're all uh, ex graduates of Ramaya, so like they have experience, they know how Ramaya works, and you get a lot of advice from them. I think they're really very helpful, and uh, yeah, as uh, Dina said, uh, uh, autonomous it's autonomous and affiliated, so it's to be to you. So I think it's yeah. That's good. Okay, so 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 you also feel that being autonomous is is good because they can deliver the curriculum in a different way and in a more updated manner, right? Yes. Um, right. Over to BMS. Now, um, maybe Aditi, if you can give us some idea as to what is different about BMS, what makes it stand out as compared with the other schools. 
in design uh, we have these uh, external faculty coming for us who are active in the industry like they would be practicing architects so personally uh, i have like learned a lot from them uh during the design process they would be telling what would be their experience if they had a similar kind of project uh that was really very helpful for most of us uh and uh, i don't know but i felt we too was better than autonomous because uh, we have like uh, some things flexible and our subjects were like something in an order like If we learn something in second sem it will be based on our first sem so in that way and again now we are in the top uh, 20 architectural colleges across india so and the first in karnataka is pms uh, that is it and again most of our teachers are alumni of pms itself so they even uh, teachers who used to teach them will are also teaching us so we have very experienced faculties all right all right uh charita do you have anything to add um, no i think i think said that well um yeah so as she said our professors professors are also teaching us so we have a lot of experienced people as well as um, you know we have visiting faculty who are actually practicing architects in the field who also um, weigh in on our design process so i think all right uh, interesting so so um this was an interesting question because what i got from here is okay one bms you guys are in a non autonomous system where you'll follow the vtu process and you'll think that is better and um elena and dina are in the autonomous process and they think that is better right so i think it's a matter of perception right i mean um so for the audience here this is a beautiful question because it's brought out certain things here now one of the things are when you're in the system that is what you know that's all you know right uh, it's difficult to put a framework as to which one is better because you're not in the other system right it's only people like us who are looking at it from the outside uh, you know um, we don't look at it as whether this is better or that is better All right so the point in having these uh, students come from different colleges is not to figure out which is better but to figure out their experiences and to say which is that experience that i connect with right because each student connects with a different uh, experience and you need to figure out uh, which of these experiences you prefer and that's the college you need to go for um but just as an opinion in terms of our understanding um the council of architecture has given a structure and saying that these are the things that needs to be covered so as long as the universities or colleges or institutes cover that framework the council of architecture is okay with giving the their signature and stamp of approval but from a university perspective they talk about how that framework has to be delivered all right so they can use multiple mediums multiple methods multiple experiences you know different types of faculty to deliver that curriculum and deliver that structure and they can put in additional information as well or additional uh, requirements to make that um, you know more current Uh, because what the council of architecture prescribes is they want it to be implemented across india across many years across various constraints so it may not be very uh, updated where that's where the colleges and institutes come into the picture and that's where they say okay we need to do this to make it more updated and that's where they take their own decisions but i think um, you know um, i think vtu versus autonomous you know we really need to see where, what the curriculums are in each uh, in each institute and how it's being delivered and uh, you need to see what works with you all right uh right so gigi john is saying very informative did these students join bms and 
uh, and MS Ramaya via, via CET or Comet K. So did you all join via CET or Comet K? Uh, everyone joined through CET, put your hands up. Okay, so uh, yeah, because all of these were top ranking students, so um, it would have been easy for them to get through uh, CET. How difficult was it to select a college during the counseling process? So here I want to know from you, what made you all select BMS or, or Ramaya? Or how did you all put, what were the factors that you, were in your mind when you're always selecting a school or the order of your school? So Charita, if you could start off. Um, yeah, so for me, based on what my seniors have told me and also uh, based on the ranking, uh, it was between RV and VMS. Um, RV for me is like very far from my house. So that's the reason I chose VMS. And also RV, uh, they don't have NASA events as far as I'm aware. So uh, VMS, that way I wanted to be uh, more involved in design competitions. Yeah. All right, all right. So Aditi, what made you select VMS? Again, like uh, taking reviews from seniors and few of the faculties across different colleges. And basically, again, it was between BMS and RV for me. RV is too far. Uh, BMS is quite near. And again, looking at all the rankings and stuff. And as Charita pointed out, uh, RV is not a part of uh, the NASA, the National Architecture Student Association. Uh, so... Uh, in BMS, we got like uh, more exposure across the national level along with uh, different architecture uh, students. So that's why I chose BMS over our other colleagues. And that's very important to be part of the NASA, isn't it? I mean, because that's where the fun, that's where the interaction, that's where the, you know, the travel happens. So all that is very important. Uh, Elena, what about you? What made you select MS Ramayam? Uh, for me, it was between uh, Ramaya and uh, RV College. And uh, I chose Ramaya also because it is uh, closer to my house than RV. And I, my, one of my friends is a senior in, our, in, in Ramaya. So she also had a very good opinion about Ramaya. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, Dina? Uh, so for me, it was between Ramaya and WCFA Mysore. For me, what I thought was if I stay in Mysore, I have to do everything on, on my own. Plus, you know, doing everything for architecture itself, I wouldn't have the time. And uh, that way I put up Ramaya first. And I got in and it's closer to my place as well. And I stay in Bangalore. Mysore would mean hostel life. I want that at some point, but as of now, I thought, you know, Ramaya would make more sense. All right. All right. Any of y'all are staying in the hostel or staying, you know, okay, fine. Um... Right. So, so I think from what we see is that you are primarily gone by speaking with your seniors, number one, or taking past information. And the second thing is you have seen proximity, right? Uh, say, okay, the least travel to, to the school would be better for me. And that's why you're selecting that. So, yeah. Um, right. So coming down to our, at least the opinion of us interacting with so many students every year, what we do see is that opinions are subjective, right? You may talk to some seniors who absolutely love it, and you may talk to the to other seniors from the same batch, from the same classroom, and they may absolutely hate it, right? Um, so you do get mixed opinions on this uh, when, when selecting a school. But I think ultimately, even if I look at all the schools that you'll mention, pretty much all of them are in the same band, right? There may be slight differences here and there, but the experiences are, are quite diverse. Now, something like you mentioned, when a college is not part of a NASA, then that's a major uh, flag. That's a major red flag, right? Uh, but otherwise, I think from what I understood, your, your faculty is good, they're experienced, they're approachable, um, they're very interactive and you know um, you get your opportunity so on the other levels I see a lot of commonalities irrespective of the school right so uh, yeah so to the students here the advice would be talk to your seniors understand the proximity and uh, also also probably do a little more research 
in terms of the curriculum and how the curriculum is delivered and see what works for you. All right. But there really may not be too much difference between these, you know, top three schools or four schools. Um, right. Uh, Gigi is asking how easy or difficult was it to select your college during counseling? So I hope that answers your question. Uh, as far as the online process goes, it's a it's a question of just selecting your online uh, colleges, uh, just selecting the colleges in order, and and it's quite a simple, straightforward process. Uh, unless someone wants to add something, I'll go to the next question. Um, Tanishka Gupta is asking, which exam do we need to give to get into BMS and uh, our Ramaya? JE paper two or NATA? Tanishka, uh, this year there's been a change. NATA is the primary exam that you need to, uh, to uh, clear to get through. Um, they could use JE paper two, but that's not a qualifying exam that is only used for the ranking. Uh, but the qualifying exam is NATA. So please focus on NATA uh, for sure. This, the, the clarity on JE paper two is not out yet. Uh, we'll only know now as the as the uh, the JOSA or the, the the entrances for the ranking for uh, NITs and SPAs, when that comes out, then we'll have a little more clarity. Viba is asking, do you have languages like Kannada? So you mentioned that you'll have Kannada, right? Uh, anything, anyone has any other language other than Kannada? What are the non-core uh, subjects, subjects that may not have credits? Open question to you. So, so there are no non-core subjects. I think from our batch onwards, all of the subjects which are not as important, they're all given one credit at least. So you have constitution, you have Canada, you have communication skills. Uh, later on, I, I think those three are the main ones. They're all given one credit, but they're not as difficult. Even a person who doesn't speak Canada can, it's it's very simple. I think if you have done Canada up until 10, there is this, uh, you have a different Canada, uh, what do you call it, syllabus, it's called Canada Manas. So that's a little bit higher, but for the rest of us who haven't done it up until 10, it's called Canada Kali. It's very simple. It's just letters and like what you would speak. And that, I mean, if you if you travel in autos or buses, you would know that Canada, that, that's all is taught. Anyway. All right, but do you, do you get credits for that? I mean, is it, are you yes. evaluated, you get credits. So it's something that you have to attend. Yeah, right? from this batch onwards. All right, anything else other than Karna? Is there any other subjects that uh, I, I remember you mentioned something earlier? Um, yeah, there was this co communication skills that is more or less like English or say how you would present yourself if you're maybe writing your resume, stuff like that. And there is constitution. Constitution, they, they're like, tell you about laws and stuff very very basic again we don't we i think we have it next year not this year but we finished canada and communication skills in person okay okay um right so we are we are out of time but let me just quickly finish the next few questions um dia is asking are there any specific materials we need to have before joining the college Um, I think the college itself will tell you what you need to buy. There's a lot of stuff you'll need for model making and for drafting and your design. So you'll have to buy a lot of stuff, but I, the college will inform you. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, which one do you prefer, iPads or laptop? Do we need to buy in the first year itself? A question from Sanika. Aditi, if you can take that. Uh, usually in the first two years, we won't be using software. Uh, until and unless it's for any personal use, uh, but I feel uh, laptops are better since you'd be having, if it was the online, we had to make a lot of presentations and everything as group projects. So laptops would be better, I feel. Do you all have a need for using the pen tablets, like Wacom tablets and all that? Uh, no, no. Charita, you I think if you want to start participating in design competitions in second year itself, then it's good to get like a like a pen tablet. I would say not Apple products unless you have like everything in Apple, like a MacBook, and you know, because uh, it, it makes it easier if you use like a normal laptop and maybe a laptop instead of an iPad, because an iPad is a huge investment. 
Right, right, right. So Wacom uh, has their products, which are really good in and user friendly and very uh, interesting. So probably that's something you could consider, but uh, otherwise, um, not really. You, your uh, laptop is sufficient. Uh, Sanjana is asking, isn't NATA or J paper two enough to get into college? Is CT required? Sanjana, you're right. CT is not required, but you need to apply to CT. So if you fall under the the um, Karnataka quota, there's forty percent of the seats reserved for you in Karnataka, right? And to get into that, uh, to allocate those seats, they they need someone to allocate. So the Karnataka CT cell is has taken the responsibility to allocate those seats. Um, and so they, they are the ones who are compiling the ranks. So you need to inform them that, yes, I want to apply for architecture. And that's the only reason why you connect with the CET cell and you apply for CET. Uh, but you do not need to answer the physics, chemistry, mathematics, or biology required in uh, CET, right? Uh, Ravi, Ravi Gauda is saying, thank you for your honest responses. So your uh, feedback is well appreciated. Um, Praham is asking, BIAC does not guarantee placements, but is there any way that your local companies in the city conduct any placements? So have you all come across, have you all focused on placements so far or, or worried about it? Anyone? Okay. So during our orientation, I, from what I understood, I, we didn't have at all. Usually architecture colleges don't, but Ramaya had them. I don't I had no idea about them until the orientation, but Ramaya had them. I don't placement opportunities. Internships, they don't help you. you have all right. I think I'm not sure if I heard that clearly. Uh, I, I don't know if it was an issue with my connection or your connection. Uh, but what I understood is that generally, what you said is generally, if I have to rephrase that, generally architecture schools do not have placements, but Ramaya has a placement cell that helps mm -hmm. with final placements, but not for internships, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what you mentioned. Uh, how's it in uh, BMS? Uh, we are like not so sure about placements, so like, but okay. we have seen teachers talking about it. Like, uh, right. some teachers would be uh, associated with few students. They will help them, but not like we are very not sure about it. So, but is it something that you worry about? That oh, will I get placed at the end of it? It depends, like, if you want to do your master's, then or else probably where you do your internship, if they allow to continue, or you know, I haven't, like, worried about placements yet. Okay, Charita, you don't seem to be worrying about placements either. Yeah, no, I haven't thought that far ahead. All right, all right. What about Dina and Elena? How about you? Uh, yeah, I haven't thought that far ahead, actually. But, yeah. Okay, and, and Dina, what's your opinion on this? So I was a little bit worried because when I used to go through quota answers and, you know, you had very, very low salaries for architects who are just starting, but then you had some exponential growth after 10 years and all. But I think we'll see about it in five years time, probably to change then. <laughs> okay. So, uh, good. Uh, why I, I particularly asked all of you all this is because, you know, if you all put yourselves in your shoes uh, maybe a year or a year or two back then i'm sure you all would have been in the same frame of mind that that uh, students are asking right students and parents talk talk to us and they say oh what about placements how is the placement um, and this is this is very interesting because before you get in the thing is, everyone's comparing an architecture school with an engineering school and say, oh, in this, this so many companies came and, and uh, hired so many students. But architecture doesn't work like that. And it's beautiful to see that all four of these students here and probably all of their classmates, they don't even think about placements. Placements is not something they think about. It will happen. 
what they are working on right now and focused on is to number one gain their skills do well submit their assignments learn as much as possible and then probably the next step would be to look for good internship opportunities and the next step would be to try and get a job in that same you know extend that internship opportunity to a job offer and then finally look out for a job so there's multiple steps to go before you finally make that decision or reach that um, problem of of placements um is there any different thought or have i summarized that okay yeah all right all right um so fantastic i mean uh, I, I thanks praham for asking that because that's a very relevant question it's anxiety that a lot of parents and students go through and what we see here is that anxiety is unfounded please don't worry about that so much take things as they go take one step at a time uh, neha govindraj what are the top schools in bangalore neha um, uh what you're asking is a very subjective question um every school is there to give good education and good quality education all right and it's very important that you are um you are in this process to to understand so what we are doing here is we are facilitating this exploration of various uh, colleges and that's the reason why we are calling these students from different colleges or the management from different schools and uh, our students from different schools so if you go on to dq edge and click on colleges you will see a list of colleges here and possibly you can you know not all the colleges are, are here but as many as possible you can click on them you'll get some information and uh, you may get an inquire button so you click on this inquire button it may ask you to log in but after that at least your your inquiry would go to the correct um person and and the school may call you back so your contact details will be shared with the school so you only approach the schools that you're interested in and uh, you know they will they will uh, call you back um or or you know you submit it here and then we'll see what to do next all right but a lot of good schools listed here jindal and all that see so it's not necessarily that you know all the schools good schools have to be located in bangalore it's not necessary that all the good schools have to be old schools right they could be very new schools very innovative methods of teaching um you know and and really what we are doing is creating the platform please do go through our uh, our uh, webinar our youtube channel you'll find all these many of these schools listed here go through all the webinars that will help you tremendously all right so i hope that's answered your question um last question from from liz gigi john do you do you have different kinds of workshops in college uh, i'll leave this open any one of you can take this and then we will take this as the last question yeah so any of you all would like to talk about your workshops charita you can go ahead so um, we did go to college offline for like about a month and that time we had like a uh, uh, this brick working workshop once and then we had a wood working workshop and um, like our seniors also have the as i said about that uh, step program and i think during our msrg fest like the formal part of that fest there are a lot of uh, workshops like um like resin art and pottery and fun things like that nice interesting uh, any other uh, that you'd like to speak about aditi uh, and uh, even our college is uh, associated with uh, other workshops like the uh, cyber texture uh, so uh, it is basically from i don't know is it from china charita i'm not sure from architect james uh, law yeah so that's actually a very helpful workshop uh, basically our college is associated with them um, yeah, we get few international workshops also and some like one or two day workshops associated with our college will be like will be very will be very frequent all right all right uh, how about at ms ramaya anything else 
anything you all would like to add uh, so we had this rendering workshop once i think around last sem it was i think they taught us how to use alcohol pens then a little bit of oil painting and watercolors and i've seen posters up i have not been to them but uh, i think there was a pottery workshop once and something regarding photography as well so that's what i've seen all fantastic so cool i mean uh, i i've seen that you know various colleges organize various workshops music uh, music and architecture and you know various things like that uh, is very important that you all participate actively in these workshops and really absorb as much as possible um, and and uh, one last question from pratham is uh, is is the nirf ranking of colleges something to consider uh, pratham i number one i personally don't think the nirf ranking it's a start right now but i don't think it's mature enough to really uh, categorize all schools and rank all schools in you know one two three order even if you go to that school list i personally don't think that is representative of uh, the quality of of education in schools so you may look at it as a guideline but i don't think you can that's the a good way of uh, selecting your school a good way i would recommend is to go through we are doing these webinars the e meet your your architecture school webinars so today is with these students from two schools every day we are meeting with managements of different schools so next week we have students representing pesit and bms sa um if you all want more of these interactions with students please write down in the comments below this uh, webinar on youtube and we'll take your comments in and we'll we'll try and accommodate those requests all right but for now if you've liked this webinar please click on the like button uh to get notifications of the next webinars please click the a uh, sub subscribe button so that you will get um you know the right information uh whenever that we do a webinar and priyanka pandit is saying thank you guys so much it really helped us a lot so that thanks goes all out to to the four of you all who've taken so much time out i know you all are busy uh, but you all have taken time out to come here and talk to our students is brilliant uh, last year you all were on this side of the uh of the screen and now you're on the other side of the screen so it's it's amazing to see you guys here right all the best all the best to you guys okay so thanks a lot charita aditi elena and dina it's been brilliant having you guys here i'll just end the um, webinar soon oh, oh there's a question please bring students from wcfa so the web the webinar with wcfa is tomorrow so please attend tomorrow's webinar we'll be sending the communication out right away all right okay thank you so much everyone i'll be ending this webinar right away okay yeah thank you so much. thanks thanks